Uh, so we're back. Uh, you guys won't know what happened because we have the power of editing on our side. Uh, but <laughs> my next question <laughs> was uh, related to another big event that happened to Dante right before. Uh, getting stabbed and also dying at the hands of uh -huh. Yeah, as a player, what were your thoughts during that? And what were Dante's thoughts as well during that time? Uh, as a player, I was like really stressed out and worried mm -hmm. because I love playing Dante and just sitting there completely like out of things to do. Like I couldn't do anything. I was just sitting there wa watching this ship burn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was, yeah, I, I was just desperate for anything to happen. It's because you didn't have any spell slots or anything, right? Yeah, and I, yeah, I didn't have any spell slots because I've just gone from that other big fight. Mm. Where you had also got stabbed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it was also, yeah, I'd gotten stabbed the first time, but we got the level, so that saved me. Mm. And I might have actually had a little bit of healing, but. I was keeping my distance to Adam, mm -hmm. thinking, if I can just do this, if we all just work together, I won't have to worry, and I can heal up after combat. Mm -hmm. And then I got stabbed again, and then I was just like, oh, no. Yeah. It was definitely that, because um, ideally you would have just gotten down, right? But then you got attacked again by the other one. Yeah. Hey, does the does the book work on Dante himself? No. Oh. Hmm. It's yeah, it's up to four people and only one of them per long rest. Is that a warlock thing? Yeah, it's it's an invocation I took. Oh, I see. So it's similar to how I can, you know, I don't have to sleep or I can message people. Hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying to see if there's a way that we can remedy that to where at least your you have a fail safe as well. I'll mm. have to think about that, do some research. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure you were very stressed. Um and obviously this isn't the right way to kind of react. But in the back of my head, like I, I'm still very worried about obviously characters dying and like the story and whatnot. But there's also this part in the back of my head that's just like, first time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that not that I've grown like numb to it, uh, but my my reaction is definitely like, here it goes again. <laughs> Sometimes with with Lucy's uh with Lucy's kind of fragile life. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Were you already like thinking like, oh, what's my new character gonna be like? Or were you were you thinking about that stuff, or were you just like, what do I do now? I think I was a little bit in the middle. Like, I wasn't I wasn't quite ready to to let go of Dante, so I wasn't going fully into the like, what's my new thing. But like, I was thinking about it a little bit. I just didn't have any ideas. Like it's just it's Dante or something else. Yeah, that something else would have pretty big shoes to fill. <laughs> oh yeah, Dante has small feet, but but his shoes are huge. Yes, he's a clown, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that and... is his comical role. Uh -huh. <laughs> just being the weird one occasionally. Yeah, it'd be it'd be difficult, obviously not just in terms of like the the presence that he has in this party, but also just like combat effectiveness wise. Like, what else are you gonna pull yeah. out that will beat that? <laughs> but, uh, it's also yeah a a mess because the stuff I want to try out has already partially been tried by other people. Oh really? <laughs> 
yeah, we have enough front liners right now. Ah, uh, well, hey, here, here's here's a promise to you. If Lucy and Dante both die, you can take my place as a front liner, and I will join the <laughs> back. <laughs> Hell yeah. Cool. That's that's our agreement. <laughs> hmm. I mean, Merlin's also said that he doesn't want players to think about the balance of the team, and he'll balance, you know, encounters accordingly. But it's still good to have some balance, and not just everyone being up there slapping someone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of times where I get worried, like, we're all very grouped up together. And on our first ever episode that we aired, uh, like, 75% of everyone got wrecked by a fireball. And Yeah. <laughs> Especially with a lot of the the mage uh, characters that we've been facing, where no one at this point has counter spell. Well, actually, Dante has counter spell. Yeah, Dante but, has counter spell. It never comes in useful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's nice to have like support and and um, you know front line and back line damage because uh, it, it makes combat a lot. Feel a lot safer. Where, you know, if this thing happens, we can do this. Um, mm. Where I feel like, although like this group is totally fine as it is, like, uh, there are some times when we're fighting where I'm like, dang, if we only we had this, like, someone wouldn't have died or, you know, gone unconscious or whatever. Yeah, I mean, we can never be prepared for every situation, but I do think we're prepared for a lot. Yeah, <laughs> even on the on the sort of less intense scale, where, for example, Dante can change damage types. Mm -hmm. That's a really that's a really good uh, feature that Dante has. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit limited, but it's so useful. Very uh, Joker esque, actually, having multiple quote unquote personas or elements. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that would be so interesting. Where uh, <laughs> you just pull out like, uh, whenever you decide to either use Soul Son or one of your other powers, you just call out his name like a persona. <laughs> I think it would Soul be very Son. appropriate for for Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It 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 would be. Um, I just don't know how much rapport he has with the gods who. Who yeah. Give him his powers. <laughs> mm. Um, yeah, and, and then going back to the question at hand, uh, what was Dante? Because you know we did get a few of Dante's last words, but mm. uh, what else was going through his mind as he was dying? I think Dante was he was very overwhelmed by both fear and. And also, sort of a feeling of failure. Because he was dying, and he was terrified of that. Which makes sense. But most importantly, he really wanted to help out the party. And getting rid of an Adam would... It's, it's one of the major things we've got going on. So not only failing that, but also getting killed by him. It's, it really struck Dante, and he is already not the most self-confident guy, uh, but he's heard the rest of the party hype him up all the time. The killing machine, the, the crazy maniac, and so on, and, and he just fails. He, yeah, he just gets kicked to death. <laughs> It's a very interesting... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's just... Yeah, it's just such an... It sort of proves his own point in, like, a really sad way. How so? That he always either says nothing or disputes it. Because he sees himself as... just an average farmer. Yeah. And I was just about to comment on that point. Because you had mentioned, like, Dante sees himself as just an average farmer. 
but here he has all of these people, and whether they consciously do it or not, kind of set expectations on who it should be. Like, oh, Dante, you're a killing machine. Dante, you're this. Dante, you're that. And, like, once again, maybe they're not intending to do so, but in a way, it does put an expectation in his mind where, like, if people see me as this, if I don't live up to that, I'm a failure. And so that's a very interesting point because people say he's a killing machine, but he just thinks of himself as an average dude. And it's one of those things where if you want to help someone or if you want to help the people that you know, care about, part of that is kind of living up to their expectations. Um, so that's a very yeah, interesting point and, that you made. And he really wants to be useful. So he is more than willing to just hop into that box of just being like a great fighter just so he can help out. That's it's very it's very deep and also sad in a, in a little bit of ways where uh, and I feel like a lot of the characters in Vichy can have that where it's like well I'm not living up to your expectations I, I can't you know <laughs> you know the, the normal thing where it's just I, I can't uh, do what you're asking me for or I'm not going to live up to uh, the group. And yeah, that, that's just a thing that I've noticed that a lot of our characters have. <laughs> I can draw a parallel. I really shouldn't so say it. <laughs> it's the persona again. His persona again, isn't it? It's yeah. To awaken our inner persona. <laughs> not so much that, but in that the p party is a group of people who generally all have been mistreated or like otherwise used by their superiors or their circumstances <laughs> like we've all had something like happen where yeah someone in a higher position of power has has exploited us yes <laughs> which is me... i mean it is a very standard rpg hook uh -huh. It's the easiest way to get thrown into a story, just this person tells you to do something and you do it, but it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. And you know what you mentioned and the parallel that you drew gave me such what I think is a great idea. Imagine when oh. we fight Erdy. In order to defeat her, we each have to go into our own character's palaces. Or all the group has to go into one of characters' palaces. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Yeah. What What would Dante's palace look like? Hmm. I don't. I'm not even quite sure. I mean, I suppose his his perception of the world is. One that's scarier than it really is. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. But I think, like a spooky I think forest. that da Yeah. I think Dante's would be more or less upside down. Whoa. <laughs> where, where Dante would be, like, for example, he, he'd be in the clearing of a spooky forest, as far away from the trees as he can get. And he'd be entirely helpless in there. Interesting. Almost kind of like a, I guess, like a Futaba Palace situation. Yeah. That'd be cool. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak that by Merlin and see if he picks up on it, like subconsciously, <laughs> like uh, suggest it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just yeah, manipulating the plot of the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really funny. Um yeah, that, that's that's a very cool idea. Um the that's, puppy that's, DM. I'm, Yeah. I'm gonna have to ask that for I guess the only ones who know persona though. Um on, on what their character's palace would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's a very that's a very cool idea. And I'm glad we touched upon that because that was something that never really came to my mind. It's about uh, Dante's own view of himself versus 
the views of others on the panel. So that's it's it's really I'm gonna think about that more and uh, see how I can approach that in the panel. Um, but you know, going back to Dante himself and kind of how you play him, what is it like playing him? Like, um, I, I asked the same question to Astrid uh, for her character. She asked me to answer first because she doesn't really flow. And one of the things that I brought up is that playing this is uh, difficult, at least for me. So what's it, what's it like for you playing Dante? I think playing Dante is, it's either kind of hard or really easy depending on the situation because he's very well built for combat. Like, it's just sort of how I, as a player, tend to build a lot of my characters. Um, and that can make, out of context, RP kind of hard. Because I don't have a whole lot of super useful skills. I don't have a whole <laughs> lot of, like, utility spells. I do have some that come in very useful. But, like, you'd never know, but some of my highest, like, skills are intimidation and deception. <laughs> <laughs> which we hardly get to see. <laughs> yeah. Do you have proficiency in those, or is it just because you're, you're charismatic? No, nah, it's just because I'm really charismatic. I see. But I'm not proficient in any charisma task. <laughs> is it just nature that you're proficient in? Yeah. And that's intelligence, which is a... Yeah, which I naturally have, like, nothing in. <laughs> And yeah, I, I can I can definitely see where you're coming from. Where it can definitely be hard to, uh, for lack of a better word, succeed in the role playing aspect, at least with like NPCs and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it really shines in the combat. And so going more into the combat, you, know, you are a uh, warlock sorcerer. So what's kind of the strategy going into into combats nowadays? Well, of course, the, the thing that's always in my mind is that I have to conserve spell slots nice. as a, <laughs> a primarily a warlock. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't, I don't even have a whole lot of ranged spells, really. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time, I'll use a lot of Eldritch Blasts to sort of deal decent damage and also gauge the situation. Because it's just a great all-round spell. Nice. And then I I have the, the beloved Inflict Wounds, and now also the recent favorite, Blight, mm -hmm. as sort mm -hmm. of the, the ace in the hole. And, and usually, it is very much like Eldritch Blast for pro prolonged combat, and and high level spells if I won't need to get rid of something right now. <laughs> but Is that... I'm not that good at like conserving spell slots because I also like to just sort of do things out of spite. <laughs> like, if, like if someone hits me, I will hellish rebuke them. Mm. And, and these uh -huh. kind of things where it's sort of it's not efficient. It's not optimal, but it is fun. Yes, <laughs> and it's it's a lot more important to have to be fun and have flavor than to just use the biggest spells all the time. How many spell slots does Dante have anyway? Well, it's a you bit complicated because of the multi class. Uh huh. But yeah. Uh, Dante has uh, two fifth level spell slots, two second level spell slots, and four first level spell slots. And so he can only cast Warlock spells at their highest level, right? But the sorcerer spells at any level. Uh, I can actually works? also cast uh, the um, the Warlock spells at low level. Oh, okay. That's that's really handy. Yeah. So, for example. 
uh, for something I know will be a prolonged fight, I can use first level hellish rebukes to sort of just get a little bit of chip damage in. No, that is really helpful. And um, I know I I've heard that <clears throat> warlocks do well when there's a lot of short rests, but in this campaign, we don't really have like numerous instances of combat. It's it's just like a big uh, session of combat you know, that happens uh, like once every maybe like two or three sessions. Yeah. Do you think that works well for Dante, or do you think it's it's? I it's think that whatever. works really really well. Uh huh. Because also, um, yeah, it's sort of like a mechanical thing where the reason warlocks do so well when there's a lot of short rests is because that's sort of the trade-off for having basically no spell slots is that they can get them on a short rest. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we fight so rarely kind of just makes the heavy-hitting spells cooler, almost. And it... it, yeah. it it balances itself out because we're not getting worn down. Mm -hmm. Except when we are. Yeah. <laughs> like if I had when twice the spell slots, I could have healed. Yeah. yeah if I had just pulls used... out that three stage boss fight, it's like dang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What were you saying? I don't remember. Fair. That's usually <laughs> why I let people like continue when they're talking. So, like, yeah, I mean, it's probably with BTT, important. Yeah, with BTT, most likely they're going to forget, so I'll let them go. <laughs> <laughs> We're all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking more about kind of the strategy and combat aspect, and also the roleplay aspect, what's Dante's current uh, like level distribution in terms of classes? Um, yeah, I have three levels in Sorcerer. And then the rest will go to Warlock for the rest of time. Oh, okay. Where I um, only really dipped enough into into Sorcerer mm -hmm. to to get interesting meta magic. Ah, oh, I see. I see. Yeah. What what meta magics did you take in Warlock? It's um. Uh, is, the... is it the transmute spell where you can like change the element? Is that what it is? Yes. It's transmuted spell and also quickened spell, oh. so I can cast a spell as a bonus action. I don't. I don't think I've seen you use quickened spell yet. It's, I've used it quite a few times. Oh. Uh, especially since, for example, my um, my transformation thing is an action. Mm -hmm. So if I transform, I can't attack that turn. Ah. Wait, does that allow you to cast dual inflict wounds? No, because of a uh, a five E rule, where if you cast a spell, you have to cast a cantrip, oh. so you can't do two like leveled spells in one turn. Yeah, that'd have been really cool though. <laughs> yeah, dual wielding inflict wounds. Yes. <laughs> or like something more impressive, like like two blights. Yeah, it's double blight. <laughs> just, just burn both my five level spell slots. <laughs> hmm. And um, so with all your levels in the future going into Warlock, what are some cool things that are in Dante's way? In terms of spells or features? Have you, have you looked into it at all? Yes. Um, part of what I kind of like about um, warlocks as they level up is that while they don't get any more well I mean they don't generally get any more spell slots they do get uh, spells they can cast for free mm. which I think is just a really cool flavor thing and sort of all in all I never took warlock because of its late game mechanics I did it because it was just a really cool choice roleplay wise. So 
the the subclass we me and Merlin picked wasn't even like really finished in the late game. So it's well, it's been a lot of work for Merlin. Yeah, it's it's at this point it's pretty much entirely rewritten. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I totally forgot about that. That um, was it. Pack of the uh, the Wild okay. Heart. Pack of the Wild Heart. Yeah, I totally forgot that was a homebrew. <laughs> mm. But yeah, the, it just works really well. Features. Yeah, it really does. Um. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited to see uh, how that goes, because as a spellcaster, you know, as you get higher level, it's always like it always opens up such a big bag of tools. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, playing as a martial, it's cool to get you know, three attacks in one turn. That's also very cool. Um. Yeah, but as a spellcaster, you, know, you get so many crazy like game defining. Like game changing things, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and so I'm, we, I'm actually we, reading on it right now. Next level, I get to move faster. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I'm not 25 feet per turn anymore. Is that a warlock thing, or is that just a halfling thing? Uh the speed. Yeah, like the speed increase. Where are you getting? Oh, the speed increase from? is a warlock thing. Really. Yeah. Um. It's 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 a part of the wild heart because it's a, I mean the way it's written is very sort of being more one with nature and then Skipping walking faster. faster within it. <laughs> yeah. I see. I see. That makes sense. That was first, at first. I was like, why does being a warlock have anything to do with being able to walk faster? But you yeah, also get to sense. go difficult terrain. Oh, that's really cool. That is super cool. Plus, I mean, I also already have spells that can make difficult terrain mm -hmm. that I barely ever use. Yeah, um, I think it's because there's so many frontliners for it. Like you do it. Yeah, it's period. too impractical. Yeah. <laughs> um. Actually, no. I think I used it in like a big battle once. I I distinctly remember you using a spell. Very similar to that um, when Lucy first died uh, against the Mind Flayer. Yeah. I, I've, that... I've had a lot of my interesting spells forever. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of them, a lot of them I pick because, like, this could be super cool flavoring, and I can use this in and out of combat. And then it's like, when will I ever use the ability to make thorns? <laughs> I I think it'd be useful if we set a trap for Erdy, make it difficult to rain, and you know, just set up the stage for his success eventually. Yeah. Like uh, I, I Dante has charm person and he's used it once. Yeah, against Lucy. On Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> question is will it ever be used again or will it just be Probably. used primarily for lucy <laughs> it's gonna be the worst like advisor to the king yeah. just blatantly like, uses like spells yeah. in the courtroom <laughs> in the throne room yeah i i can definitely see that where donnie's like oh, this isn't getting anywhere and i'm getting bored Tar person <laughs> <laughs> um Speaking, you know, it, it, you know, combat is definitely a big part of Dante's uh, character, and so going deeper into that, what do you think Dante's weaknesses are, uh, like in terms of combat? Like, how do, how does he lose? Dante's weaknesses are actually quite simple, mm -hmm. where <laughs> his um, saving throws are actually pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Like, there's... I mean, we've been memeing about it for ages, where Dante barely ever fails a saving throw. <laughs> but... Like, charisma's a 9, wisdom's a 4. Mm -hmm. 
the next highest thing is Dex and Constitution at plus two. Like that's <laughs> ba that's basically negligible. Uh -huh. Where Dante is probably not terribly hard to take down, assuming you can avoid a charisma saving throw. Mm -hmm. And then, seeing as how until recently Dante's most damage dealing spells were touching. 17 armor class is not amazing. <laughs> like, it's... It helps a lot. But it's not going to pr protect against big bosses. Definitely not. Yeah. So, I... Dante is very good at not dying. And I think he is actually quite squishy. <laughs> I say 17 isn't too bad, but like Lucy's is 18, and I think Emma's is what, like 15? Yeah. Well, a lot of people wear armor, and, and then you're instantly up there. There's not a whole lot of like, change about that. Mm. And, I mean, well, my defense is from like my staff, so mm. it's basically armor. But, like, it's not bad as a warlock that is in no way specialized to melee combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, speaking more to the saving throws, uh, the good thing that you have uh, Lucy as a paladin who gives a plus five aura to saving throws. <laughs> yeah. Which it is really 10 is. feet, but it'll get, it'll, it'll become 30 feet uh, sooner, sooner than which that's very interesting. Yeah, which is crazy. Paladins are Paladins are crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. Um <clears throat> yeah, but that that's really really a good point that you bring up. But I think it's also slightly offset by your your uh tendency to get pretty good rolls in terms of saving throws at least in the clutch yeah. moments <laughs> absolutely oh yeah and we, we absolutely can't uh neglect all my resistances yes that's a big part of it <laughs> mm. but yeah I, I tend to have very like either maximum or minimum luck with dice it feels it's it's either a lucky day and everything's high, or it's an unlucky day and everything's low. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just one of those things where it, it would be nice to have a really good, you know, statistically we should be in the like the average like yeah we get pretty good rolls, but for you it's just uh one or twenty. <laughs> <laughs> And so, um, yeah, it's going, uh, uh, shifting a little bit, talking more about Dante and the future, because, you know, it's a big part of everyone's D&D character. Uh, what does he think about his position as the advisor to the throne? In a way, Dante sees that as sort of a way, again, to help other people than himself. Mm. Where, especially in the Markovia that he grew up in, where halflings were not equal, and was yeah, sort of looked down on, and they didn't really have much of a choice except be out in the distant villages and farm. Mm. Where Dante, Dante feels like if he can get in there, uh, he can make a difference and sort of, yeah, help turn things around. And especially as he, like, that's sort of a very beginning done to look at it. Uh, especially with the experiences he's had throughout the adventures we've had. He is probably also thinking, like, wider about it, where... Like, it seems as though we've 
kicked the whole bad leadership out of Markovia, and setting Markovia straight can probably help make other countries realize that they should treat their po their population better. It's a very um, it's a very noble goal, uh, if not idealistic, <laughs> in a way. It's very idealistic, <laughs> but I feel like it, it's very linked to the way uh, the 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 things we talked about earlier, where he just wants to be useful, mm -hmm. and that is like the highest tier of being useful is is working for the public mm -hmm. and i don't i don't think dante on his own would sort of have the the confidence to turn down a job like that anyway <laughs> really like just sitting there going wow i was like personally scouted by the king mm -hmm. oh well future king it's not it's not just a thing to to say no to. Except I know most of the party probably would. That's such an, this is an interesting point. <laughs> like the party's full of rebels. Mm -hmm. Or just people who are entirely dedicated to other causes. It's. It, I always call it a ragtag group of people, because yeah, other than other than Emmeth and uh, Rowan, especially now at this point, they were kind of the only ones who kind of had like a a more defined path. Uh, not necessarily like uh, something that they can't get away from, but it's just like Emmeth is the daughter of you know two royal bloodlines. Uh, of Pintuca yeah. and Schilberg, and Rowan is the bodyguard for that. It's kind of like, yep, they've got those. And then you've got the three on the other side, Dante, Ornala, and Lucy, who, at, at this point, Lucy, because, you know, Markovia, the one that he really despised doesn't exist anymore. It's uh, Those three are, like, more free and less bound to something. And so it's it's really interesting to see how how that will move forward for for everyone. Um, you think Dante will be good at his position as advisor? <laughs> I think he could he could grow into it. Mm -hmm. Where, I mean, at the moment he's definitely not fit for it. Uh, not only because of his. Just his disposition and fearfulness, but also because of his upbringing, he doesn't know much. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah, he he is just a poor farmer from the countryside. Mm -hmm. Like, in, during the campaign, has been the furthest he's ever been away from home from the very beginning. So yeah, it's it's definitely going to be this sort of thing where he has to experience more, he has to learn more before he's really ready for it. It's very true. <laughs> it's it's very true. It's like yeah, you you probably make a great advisor, but he also doesn't really know anything about like public policy just yet, and so yeah. It's hard to advise a king when you don't know how to advise him. <laughs> He's gonna enroll in some Markovian academy, and it's all just yeah. kids, <laughs> and then him. <laughs> but he's the same height. Yeah, that's that's pretty much Pokemon, the newest Pokemon. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Dante's Nimona. <laughs> oh. oh, that'll be that'll be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Except this time, you, the the task is to not battle. Yeah, 
That's because it's not battle, because you, you will die by the time they hit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then, you know, going more into the future, and, you know, one of the paths definitely being the advisor. Uh, but what else does Dante want to do outside of, you know, helping the group defeat the sisters and whatnot? Well, I think that's kind of one of the the issues on the way he's been written. Mm -hmm. Where, b because he doesn't have anything major in his past, that any past, yeah, any path in the future is kind of up to whatever happens in our game. Because yeah, he, he got this partnership with Solson, and he's got this uh, job offering in Markovia. And without those, his his only real route was was either to keep walking or to go home and be a farmer again. Mm. And and that is sort of where I see him. If all else goes wrong, he will probably just turn around and go home. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but f for now, he is probably also constantly going to be on call for Soul Sun in case baddies show up. To sort of yeah, like pest control for Butane. You're, you're the Power Ranger for, for Soul Sun. <laughs> yeah. Just whenever, whenever the local Neo Tokyo is in danger, you, you call... <laughs> The tree boy. Yeah. Just consult your nearest tree and and uh, <laughs> speak Dante's name three times to the east, and he'll be there. <laughs> y y yeah, you, you find the sun tree, and you have to perform the, the black sacrament. <laughs> Which is the offering of potato to the tree. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very interesting point that you put. Because, yeah, and it's not necessarily that it was written like in a wrong way or in a bad way. It's just that his future is, you know, for the most part, open ended. Yeah, he's incredibly open. Yeah, and in, in its own way, it's very freeing, but also very daunting, because it's like, it's just like daunting. real life. Like if you don't have, yeah, daunting. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like in real life where when you have so many possibilities ahead of you, sometimes that can be crippling in itself where it's like, what do I do? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. And, and I'm I'm also facing that with Lucy right now as well because you know, other than Adam, which at this point like doesn't have the same hate as he did before because now that he knows it's not actually his friend that did that he's just like okay you're just another you're just another enemy in the way and then even markovia falling like everything's everything's settled he wasn't even there so it's like what does he do now <laughs> yeah it's always easy to find a way forward when you when you've got like a personal vendetta going because you, you can always just march towards whatever your foe is. But exactly. as all your matters settle, there's less and less to keep walking to unless you, you start actively choosing where you want to go. Yeah. Yep. That's 100%. And so uh, with our final question, and this is a question I always enjoy asking because... It's all, it's always great to see how other people perceive and uh, you know think about your characters. And so Dante, what does he think about the the group? Dante really appreciates the group, mm -hmm. and I think yeah they they are. 
his closest friends. And he probably also almost idolizes them in some way. Interesting. Where they are... Everyone else is is proven strong and capable. Everyone has overcome all these challenges in their past. And Dante really looks up to that. And it's it's again part of the reason why he's so desperate to to be useful. Uh, but yeah, I think the one Dante looks the, the well the two people that Dante look up to the least is probably Lucy and Arnala. Yeah, <laughs> because I mean Arnala is is new, but also she seems very much like. I can equal the Dante where they're just sort of dropped up, dropped off by some supernatural being and just like you have powers, go do things. Um. <laughs> and, and I think Dante kind of sees himself in that uh, a lot. And with Lucy, it's very much that Dante is, is kind of worried about the past self-destructive behavior. Um, and how, yeah, Dante had a, a really close friendship with with Lucy before he went off and died. And I think that's <laughs> sort of also impacted Dante a lot, where those two could, yeah, they, they, they're absolutely the most likely to just, you know, go out and and have their night nightly hijinks like back with the oh it's ages ago but like the wine place and and all these times yeah. <laughs> just out causing mischief yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah it's 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 a different lucy from what first very came, different kicking genie open the door <laughs> Um. Yeah, and about uh, Rowan and Emma. What does what does Dante think about them? Ah, well, we never really decided on a law for it, but mm. of course, Dante and Emma have been adventuring together before the party met up. Mm. Longest recurring uh, uh, party members. Yes. Um, and I mean, it would be cool to actually have some kind of story on that, and maybe we should do that someday. But yeah. like, there's also there's a great deal of trust between Dante and Emmeth, mm. where of course Emmeth is dealing with a lot of other people. Where it's not so much that Dante feels, you know, left out, just that on an average level. Probably not that close to Emma at the moment. <laughs> mm. uh, but, like, Dante would absolutely step in and get hurt for Emma's sake. Mm. And, yeah, and do a lot. Definitely, I can definitely see that. They, yeah, like we were saying before, they've been there since the beginning of the campaign and have yeah. never been, like, Interrupted in their presence, so mm -hmm. very true. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also it's actually a really nice thing that Astrid has been doing, where occasionally throughout the game, where um, yeah, when Dante's been in trouble, uh, Emma has always been there as sort of the the close confidant, and and again. It was never decided out of game, but there there is just there is a, a history between them. I was here about the piano, but that's still never been explained to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember the piano. <laughs> I just know it, it exists. Yeah. I don't even remember how it came out. I think it was in one of the episodes where It was like a rebirth one. Yeah, where someone just mentioned, oh yeah, remember what happened with the piano? And I'm like, 
I have no other piano, and no one's explained to me since, and I'm I'm still stuck on it. <laughs> no, actually, it was I think it was an early episode where I think Emmett got drunk and threw up in a piano. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and I think we got kicked out of like the the inn because the piano was broken. Um. <laughs> I think that's what happened. I think Emma just got drunk and broke a piano. I see. That sounds like a very Emma thing to do, is throw up inside the piano. <laughs> it's, it's such a hardcore early Emma thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, remember that? Every time we had a minor achievement, like, people would just go to the inn and get drunk. Mm-hmm. Now we're too busy being traumatized all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 uh, it is, so this is my first campaign, right? And you've played D&D longer than me. Is that just a thing that happens as you get further into a campaign? Is it just, uh, becomes more, more trauma focused? Not necessarily. I mean, that's probably very much a Merlin thing. Like, this is absolutely my longest campaign by far. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, campaigns can absolutely stay sillier throughout. Mm-hmm. But I think it's harder to, to make a long story where you don't... Yeah, where you do other things than just write a happy story. Like, mm-hmm. you gotta... You gotta leave some scars. Which sounds dark, but like <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. It's it's very it's very true where uh you can't have the good times without the bad times. Yeah. This makes everything else more meaningful. And uh speaking of the times it's it's been really it's been really fun getting to know one of you two and playing with you as well, and uh, yeah, I, I know Merlin wants to go to I think around a hundred episodes, so that means we've still got around a little less than forty episodes to go, so still a lot to you know potentially happen. Um, I am still expecting Lucy to to die again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because, yeah, just because of the way I've built it, which is mm. a three-way multi-class that's not very uh, durable as a frontliner. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you for being the guest on the other side today. It's been really great getting to ask you these questions and learning more about Dante yourself. And so... Uh, do you want to go and hashtag plug yourself for the viewers? I can absolutely do that. Uh, well, first of all, of course, thank you for having me on. It's always nice getting to sit down and talk about Dante. Uh, but, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm Winton Vossler. Recently uh, changed my look and my design. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I play video games. And as we mentioned at the very beginning, the first plug yourself, I'm probably still playing Persona at this point in time. Uh, But (laughs) generally, I just play a lot of, especially RPGs, games that I enjoy and have fun with. Um, Yeah, this is coming out in uh, December. I will probably also be playing, like, Kingdom Hearts in in December. That's great. (laughs) Let's hope this doesn't come out, like, a, a bit after I start that. (laughs) <laughs> uh, hmm. but yeah I just try to have fun play the games I enjoy so yes. like Minesweeper. it's hard to plug like Mines- Minesweeper is still one of my favorite streams <laughs> <laughs> everyone look forward to that once again um, and yeah I'm Uspen Yume your host today for the other side Uh, For those watching during the winter break, uh, we wish you a happy holidays. Uh, Enjoy the time. Yeah, enjoy your holidays uh, from BTT and Yindy and I as well. And uh, thanks for joining us today. 
and we will see you on the other side. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.